Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Liz and I'm going vegan while doing things a little extra each time. This is Extra Vegan. All right guys, I'm really excited about today's recipe. When am I not? But because it's an Italian staple and I've really been missing it since going vegan. And that is bocconcini, which you might know as just mozzarella balls, but we're going to marinate them in some olive oil, garlic, and herbs. It's going to be so, so good. So let's get to it. All right, so to make our bocconcini, first, what you should know is you only need two pieces of equipment today, and that is going to be a blender, preferably a high-speed blender. You know, it has to be able to crush nuts, and then a saucepan. And then I guess technically a container to store the cheese in, but really just a blender and a saucepan, which is great. You don't have to be like in and out of all your cabinets or anything digging through stuff. So what we're gonna start with, putting into our blender, everything's just gonna be blended up in here and then we'll take it to the saucepan after. So again, keeping it really simple, it's so good. So we're going to start with a cup of pre-soaked and drained cashews and I soaked mine overnight, but I have made this recipe with only soaking them for a few hours to even just like 20 to 30 minutes in boiling water and it works just fine. Again, it will depend on your blender, but it, it works, it doesn't really matter, just as long as you get the cashew softened. So we'll put those in. Then we're going to add three quarters of a cup of water. And then a quarter cup of tapioca starch. There really is no substitute for this that I found. It's what's going to give the cheese its elasticity, but also its thickness. Um, because these mozzarella balls can be broiled or melted. I've used them in lasagna, in my cheese layers. Works wonderfully. So, yeah. So they're really, you really need to use the tapioca starch. So a quarter cup of that. And then, A good tablespoon of nutritional yeast and then start with about a quarter teaspoon of salt I kind of do like a quarter teaspoon and a half like a quarter teaspoon and a half a quarter teaspoon the same goes for um, garlic powder I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon and then like a little half of a quarter teaspoon and onion powder, quarter teaspoon, half of a quarter teaspoon. And now we can just blitz this all together and you just want it to get really as fine and creamy and velvety smooth as possible. So let's do that now. Okay, so I basically pulsed that for a good one to two minutes to be able to get the kind of creamy, fine consistency that I'm looking for. So it's all gonna depend on your blender, but you really do want it to be creamy. You really don't, you're not gonna want like chunks of cashew in your cheese. So with this all done, we can uh, meet me back at the stove and we will get this heated up in our saucepan and I'll show you where to go from there. All right, so once we've got our cheese mixture all done, we can go ahead and put it over a medium high heat. And you wanna just immediately start whisking. And this is where you, <laughs> your muscles are gonna show because you really need to constantly whisk this. You can't leave it, you can't, you know, put it, just turn on the high heat and, I mean, medium high heat and then you know, wait for it to come to temperature or anything. No, like from the start, you're stirring and it's gonna look like this weird, choopy, choopy, <laughs> soupy, cheesy mess, but it's, what's going to happen is it's gonna kind of get dough-like almost. I don't know if you've ever made like churros and the dough pulls away from the 
pan in the end and that's what this is going to do with the tapioca starch so we're going to just keep whisking until it gets hot enough and does that and at this point also if you weren't satisfied with the taste you know you can add more salt everybody's salt uh, differs and salt preference differs so yeah this is totally customizable but again we want it there to be flavor but you know mozzarella is more on the mild side so we're not trying to make it overbearing especially because we're going to marinate it so yeah we'll just keep whisking <laughs> and by all means get a friend family member significant other <laughs> to help you with this part it's just so much whisking probably for a good minimum of like five minutes until it gets activated with all the heat so yeah okay guys at this point you can see that my uh mozzarella is now pulling away from the pan and it's pretty much impossible to uh, whisk at this point. And that's what you want. It's kind of like a big, thick dough. And so we're gonna take that off the heat and then immediately set up um, an ice, a water ice bowl. So, I guess I meant an ice water bowl um, so that we can drop our pearls into it. So, I will meet you there. So, I've got our ice water bath and my cheese mixture right here off the stove. I've also got this little melon baller that I'm going to use to make my mozzarella balls. If you didn't have a little melon baller, you could use a tiny ice cream scoop or a teaspoon because it doesn't really matter. This does help with the shape. But you're, you're gonna see, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll it in my hands, so it'll be fine. So you take some of the cheese, it kind of helps to like get your hand wet, because the dough will kind of stick to you. Um, keep calling it a dough, the cheese will stick to you. It just has such a dough-like consistency. And so then you just get these little um, balls and you just drop them all down in there. It helps to dip your, you know, scoop too. And again, this is just, I like little ones. You could do big mozzarella balls and then slice them for pizzas and stuff. Totally up to you. But yeah, I'm just gonna get these all rolled out and put into our ice bath. And then we can marinate them. Now that our mozzarella balls are finished in our ice water and have just been chilling, we can go ahead and move them into a mason jar. So this recipe is going to bake, I know this looks like a lot of bocconcini, but this recipe is going to fill up maybe about like half of this mason jar. So if you really want the whole full deal, um, double this, go ahead and double this recipe. But since it'll be just me eating them, I don't need that many. They'll keep for about a few days to like a week in the fridge. And I just kind of like to rinse them off a little bit. Just kind of give them a pat with the paper towel so that it's not too much excess liquid of just water getting in there. Because we really want the oil and seasonings to be the star. And so once I've kind of got this first layer down, that's when I like to start building all my flavors. So I'm doing a mixture to save money. Obviously, if you have a ton of olive oil to spare, use all olive oil. But I'm going to do a mixture of olive oil and canola oil. I'll put a healthy glug of that over them. I will also do a pinch of salt. I'll do a pinch of basil. 
you could use fresh basil. I find that the, you know, it doesn't make too much of a difference. I feel like the dried basil actually has a more concentrated um, flavor, so it's good for the marinade. And then I have one huge clove of garlic that I've kind of finely chopped, not quite minced. And I'm gonna put some of that down there. And then I also love um, red pepper flakes. So I'm going to put a nice healthy dose of them in there. And then we repeat the whole process. And so for the next layer, what I'll do is add olive oil on top instead of the canola oil. I kind of go in alternating layers. And it's, by all means, it's not going to matter if you wanted to just do all canola oil at first. Um, then just dump your olive oil on last or vice versa or you just are doing one whole oil it really doesn't matter because in the end you can shake this up to get all the goodies all the marinade um in between each layer so yeah it's totally fine if if you just um do it all at once i just like to go in this kind of layer so yeah, so now I'm gonna do the olive oil. And I would keep it to a pretty mild olive oil. Um, if you go, if you go really strong with like a fancy olive oil, um, it's, you know, they're going to absorb that strong flavor. So just, you know, be careful and think about that if you don't want that as your end result. But yeah, so I'm going to finish layering these and then we will look at our beautiful end result. And so these are our finished bocconcini. I went ahead and um, put on my lid for my mason jar and shook them up, got all that goodness uh, all throughout the jar. And now you can just eat these as is, but obviously they haven't had a chance to marinate. So you kind of want to leave them in the fridge for a few hours at the minimum. And if you find that the olive oil kind of congeals and seizes up in the fridge and becomes solid just leave it out on your counter at room temperature when you want to eat them um, a little bit before you want to eat them I mean so that it can just kind of become liquid again and it'll be perfectly fine but yeah let's um get in there so I can show you ah uh, they're just so cute they're all you know their own individual shape um just, uh, I try to hold on. Let me bite this. Mm. So good. That pull. And it is springy, like mozzarella. It's just, it's mm, soft and delicious. So, I hope you enjoyed this recipe because it's just so easy to make that took like less than 10 minutes from start to finish you only need you know the two equipment pieces so yeah I'm I'm gonna put these in the fridge and then probably you know they're really great for like caprese salads with you know tomatoes and ba that's when you can put in the fresh basil leaf in between them like on a skewer or just on a plate Really, and like I said, it can melt on pizza. And I've used it in lasagna. So good. So, yeah. All right, guys, that's how you make bocconcini. I hope you like this recipe. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new videos go up. I know, shame, same spiel every time. But yeah, so I'm gonna go dig into these awesome little marinated pearls and I will catch you all next time. Bye.